Welcome to Beyond the Press Release, a production of Gorecom, in which we speak to small cap executives right after they put out an important news. The company we're talking about today, talking with Poet Technologies, trades on the TSX Venture Exchange under the stock symbol PTK, and for our friends in the US, under Poet F, a great symbol on the OTC QX, which is the most senior of the OTC markets there. With us today, all three of the gents are back. Uh, Suresh Venkatesan, Chairman and CEO, Vivek Rajgaria, President General Manager, and Thomas Mika, Executive VP and Chief Financial Officer. Now, for those of you new to the story, because I said this last time, we got two kinds of people that are going to be uh, watching this. One, the longtime poet shareholders, love having you here. Two, given the fact that another big day for poet technology closed up 20 cents uh, at 20%, sorry, at 72 cents, means we're going to have a whole bunch of new people watching. So to understand, because uh, we're all kind of going through this, to understand Poet Technologies, you first have to understand uh, you. And what I mean by that is every day, people like you, us around the world, are, we're binging Netflix, we're watching YouTube videos, we're shopping on Amazon, streaming Spotify, and even Zooming meetings like this. And we do it all demanding the fastest speeds possible. Anything less than the speed of light has basically become unacceptable. But that's not all we demand. We want even more of that. So while we're doing all these things, we also want artificial intelligence to know our preferences and recommend us the next movie, the next song, the next video, or the next travel destination, whatever the case may be. And again, anything less than the speed of light, plus that kind of supercomputing cloud computing power is unacceptable nowadays. All that comes, all that power comes from servers, data centers, cloud computing, but what really connects all of them? What transfers the speed? What, what transfers the data and information uh, as fast as possible, the speed behind it? That's where Poet Technologies comes in uh, with their photonics, uh, specific photonic devices. These photonic devices create, detect, and manipulate light. Laser generated light is critical, fundamental uh, to sensing, computing, and, and telecom and telecommunications, all of which require the fastest transfer of data possible. What Poet has done is developed a unique, disruptive and differentiating new entry into photonics markets. They call that the Poet Optical Interposer Platform. Uh, and we know that sounds a little bit complicated. That's what we're gonna talk about partially today, but the press release we're talking about, Poet announces industry first flip chip DML lasers. That sounds complicated. Guys, let's talk about it. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Um, and I'm, I'm here with uh, Vivek and Tom, uh, as, as, as usual, I think we're going to, you know, spend the next few minutes here explaining what we've done as a company and, um, and, and what it really means to us as a company and to you as a shareholder, um, either your longstanding shareholders or potentially new eyes looking at the company as, sure. as, as a fantastic new investment opportunity. Um, so before we get started, you know, I just kind of wanted to say it set some basic definitions out there just so that, you know, we can understand um, the, the, the rest of this presentation. So I think we've used many terms in the past and even in this press release. Um, so I think it's useful and important to kind of articulate what that really means. You know, the first thing we keep talking about is, uh, is the concept of a platform technology. What, is, what does a platform mean? I think I usually go back to an automobile because that's one industry that has embraced the concept of a platform as a means to quickly put out derivative products, as a means to have efficiency, as a means to provide scale. Um, and for example, you could, you could have an engine and you'd have multiple components. Uh, you'd have a six cylinder, four cylinder, what have you, multiple power levels. You'd have a transmission. You could have a front wheel drive, rear wheel drive transmission. You'd have a chassis. Um, it can be, you know, put together. The same chassis can be used as a sedan. It can be used in an SUV um, and can be used as a sports car in a two-door version. So that's, that's the definition of a platform is the creation of the chassis, the engines, the transmission, you know, kind of the, the, the wrapper, or, or, you know, if you will, around the, the, the product. Um, and so that means, you know, when a customer asks for X, Y, Z, you can put these things together faster and more efficiently than you could otherwise. Um, so that concept is what we're adopting here in POET when we call something a platform. So the fundamental interposer is a chassis. 
on which multiple components are assembled. And, and that chassis itself can, can take various forms, but that is one basic component of a platform. Um, just like engines power a car, lasers power our interposer. Um, and so we would have the different types of lasers. We'd have, you know, what we've talked about in this press release is called the directly modulated laser, or we'd have other lasers. Lasers can have different power levels, just like you have different power levels in the engines of a car. Some people might want something that puts out 20 milliwatts. Some people might want something that puts out 50 milliwatts. So having this portfolio of specific lasers is important that allows us to customize solutions for customers. Uh, similarly with transmission, we would have filters. You're gonna either have two channel filters, four channel filters, just like you would with a front wheel drive or a four wheel drive. I mean, so what we're creating is this kind of a menu platform that allows us to over time quickly create derivative products that uh, address larger and larger and expanding markets. So that is kind of, you know, a, hopefully gives you a good picture of what we mean when we say a platform. Now let's talk about lasers in particular. Um, we form in this particular press release, we talk about a directly modulated laser. Um, so think about a light bulb. Okay, you turn the bulb on and it's on, and then you turn it off and it's off. A directly modulated laser, uh, and, and basically everything that we're doing is digital signals. So which means you either want to transmit a one or you want to transmit a zero. So right. when the light is on, you're transmitting a one. When the light is off, you're transmitting a zero. So the whole point is, can you modulate a particular light signal between ones and zeros as desired by the information that you're trying to transmit? So in the case of a directly modulated laser, it's like turning the light switch on and off. So you're directly turning the light switch on and off in order to create the light to put out either a one or a zero. That is contrasted with what we call a continuous wave laser, uh, which is externally modulated. In that case, the light is on all the time. And you, let's say you take a sheet of paper and you're putting it in, an, in front of the light or away from the light so that you're blocking the light or transmitting the light. So in that case, the light is on all the time and you're modulating the light externally. So that's called a CW or a continuous wave laser modulated externally. And we've got both of those types of lasers as part of our platform. So a directly modulated laser is a laser in which the laser is turned off and on as you're transmitting ones and zeros. And the frequency or the speed at which you can transmit that information then becomes an important metric. So the lasers that we're talking about transmit at 25 gigabits per second. One gigabit per second is 1 billion bits of information per second, 1 billion. And so our lasers transmit at 25 billion bits per second. Um, now, as you get to frequencies that are even faster than that, that is 50 billion bits per second, then it becomes very difficult to directly turn the light switch on and off that fast it's much easier to modulate it externally. And that's where a continuous wave laser comes into picture because those lasers are applicable for higher frequency applications, 50 gigabits per second and beyond, right? So our portfolio is comprised of both directly modulated lasers that can go up to 25 billion bits per second. And then continuous wave lasers can then take it beyond that to the next generation of technology, which is the 50 billion bits per second, which are used in the 400 gig data center applications. So that's just kind of a broad example or a, you know, a description of what it is that we're gonna be talking about in the press release. Um, yeah, yeah, sorry, that's a great question. example, by the way. Great example, how you, how you lay that all out. All right. and, and then the final point I wanted to make is what is this term that we call flip chip? So I think in the semiconductor industry over decades, uh, you create a semiconductor chip and that chip can be a microprocessor, it can be a microcontroller, it can be a memory chip, or it can be a laser or a photodiode. It doesn't matter what chip it is, but that chip has, essentially has to be put in a package before it can be put into a system. And the act of connecting the chip to the package is um, can, either, can take one or two forms. One is the traditional way it's done, which is called wire bond technology, which means you basically literally connect the chip to a package with a piece of wire. 
And so these wire bond technologies have been the technologies that have been used and are currently still used in very high volume. But as frequencies become faster and faster, it's very difficult to transmit large amounts of information through these individual wires. And in that case, people in the semiconductor world have adopted what is called a flip chip technology, which means the chip is inverted and placed onto a substrate and the interconnects are now all in the substrate. So you're no longer dealing with thin wires that are connecting the chips. You're just basically inverting the chip and placing it onto the substrate and, and creating a good mechanical, electrical, high integrity bond between the chip and the substrate. So that is what flip chip technology is about. Um, nobody, I mean, what a lot of people have talked about using flip chip technology in photonics, um, but for a variety of reasons, um, it is currently still not broadly employed. And, and Ford has spent a lot of time enhancing the capabilities of the technology such that the flip chip technology is, uh, is an integral part of the interposer. In fact, the interposer works on the premise that chips can be flipped placed onto the interposer and all the, the interposer does what the interposer is supposed to do is provide electrical interconnectivity between all of these chips that are placed on it. So flip chip of a photonics device is fundamental, fundamental to the proliferation of our interposer technology into products. And that's what makes this past announcement that we did last week so foundational to what it is that we're trying to do. Um, in order to solve or make the process of flip chipping a chip on an interposer effective, there are four critical areas that need to be solved, uh, which is not normally thought about when you're talking about wire bonds. It has to be mechanically robust, which means it can't fall, up, f fall or move or jiggle. And, and we're talking, you know, within micrometers. So that is, you know, one billion the size of the human air, right? That, 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 that's the dimensions we're talking about. So it has to be mechanically robust. It has to be electrically robust, which means the electrical signals that I'm transmitting to this laser cannot have any resistance or high contact uh, associated with it. It has to be optically robust. And this is where a lot of people have tripped up. Uh, photonics devices are finicky and care has to be taken when you're flip chipping them such that the, the integrity of the optical signal coming out of that laser is not affected by the act of flip chipping. And that took us a while to develop the IP and the capability around how do you flip chip a device um, and, and still have it optically be sound. And the last piece is that these devices, once they're on the interposer, have to be thermally robust. So there, there are four critical kind of paths that have to be perfected. And, and, and that's what, again, makes this an exciting an announcement for us because you know it has taken us a while to get there, but it's also revolutionary, groundbreaking, and foundational to the interposer technology in terms of solving these issues and being in a position to say, we're the first in the industry to have done this. The first in the industry to have done it effectively with a DML laser that doesn't degrade the mechanical, thermal, electrical, optical properties that make it now an effective device that can be used in communications going forward. Um, and finally, these DML lasers that we're dealing with are the probably the tiniest photonics devices that have been handled in any form. Um, they, you know, they're um, even smaller than Vixels, um, you know, physically. So, uh, so th th you know, that takes some skill and capability in order to uh, adequately flip chip it and place it onto the interposer. So I think we, uh, as a team, are extremely excited because, you know, there, there have been a lot of industry firsts, and you will hear us talk about many industry firsts on this platform. But this is a big one, um, to be able to take a really small DML laser die, flip chip it with no detri de detrimental effect, and, and something that is we know is foundational to the proliferation of this platform, right? So, so that is uh, important. And um, so we'll just now, I, I just wanted to set the tone for what it is that we've talked yep. about, at least in 
in a manner where maybe people can understand what I'm talking about, as well as its significance to the company and to our products going forward. Um, so maybe I'll turn this back to you now, George, and maybe you could uh, you know, go through some questions that you believe might be front of mind to our investors. Yeah, and Suresh, look, uh, it, poet, the poet message uh, is an ongoing, you know, it's, it's an ongoing uh, uh, thing that we've got here. So those kind of descriptions that really go out of the way to explain it, make it so much easier. So that, that was great. My first reaction then, even though I've got some questions, my first reaction is to put it all into perspective is what has customer and industry reaction been to this industry first to give us at home a sense of just how big of an industry first this is. Yes. Yeah, Vivek, why don't I, yeah. yeah. So as you know, Suresh already described the, uh, why this is meaningful, just to give a little bit more color to it, uh, George is, uh, you know, in my experience in about 30 years in this industry, as you go to higher speed, um, you know, uh, you need to modulate at faster speeds in order to move the signal through the, through the laser light. Here, what we've done is, and in order to do that, in this case, in order to increase the speed, you use multiple colors of light that can be combined together using what we is called optical interposer, which is optical multiplexer, which is on our interposer. But in order to do that, and these are very narrow beams of light, you have to use lenses, micro lenses that sit on epoxy and cured and align all these lights, okay? So in order to increase all these speeds, you have to do that. What the breakthrough we've done here is we have used uh, this flip chip uses traditional semiconductor type of pick and place and bonding equipment, which can take the laser, flip chip it, put it on our optical interposer, very similar to semiconductor packaging versus the boutique optical packaging, which requires a lot of time, a lot of expensive capital equipment. It's a slow process. So you can't get the cost and scale. So what Again, we believe that this is a, a huge breakthrough for our customers is reducing the cost for them in this huge transceiver market for data centers, which today, as we, as we put out in, our, in the press release, is a multi-billion, two and a half billion dollar market opportunity still increasing. And then as we go to 400 gigabits, it increases even further. So about three and a half, four billion in a few years. So huge market opportunity where we can reduce the cost for our customers, as well as increase the scale per capital investment of dollar so they can produce more and service the uh, huge you know, data center uh, market that is growing and 5G markets. And, and Vivek, the customers share that enthusiasm you know, when they saw- Absolutely, the and, and yeah, and George, we mentioned in previous, uh, previous uh, discussion we had with you is we have been working with some lead customers, you know, uh, in lockstep here. So they have been aware, they saw the potential and now that potential is coming to realization and become a product. And now other customers, which were not completely engaged with us also are seeing the benefit of what this optical interposer platform developing uh, things like this flip chip of the DMLs on it will provide to them. So it's it's very exciting for our customers too. Yeah, what is that, uh, the flip chip? Why is the flip chip of DMLs important? I know you guys- have so, so as Suresh mentioned, when you go to higher, higher speeds, you use, you need to use the external modulator like a shutter, okay? What we have done is used the a DFP laser, which is a high speed laser at 25 gigabits. We have flip chipped it, means it's passively in integrated using, using uh, you know, you remove that external shutter as a piece part to the whole thing, as well as the cost of putting that piece part in and aligning. So all that cost was uh, is removed, as well as it uses traditional type of semiconductor packaging versus the boutique and expensive, you know, optical packaging techniques. So that's why it's so meaningful. And is that the differentiator, uh, Vivek? At the end of the day, that is that that only poet can do that. So, uh, 
as far as we know, again, we don't know everything that uh, uh, others are doing, but what we have, and I can just talk from my experience, it is a challenge what to, you know, to do this. But the optical interposer, what it provides is just like a PC board in electronics, where you put the ICs, resistors, capacitors on it, you know, and you bond it. That's the type of platform that we have come up with. The waveguides, optical multiplexer, optical demultiplexer are all laid out on the surface. So these devices go on the surface, which makes it much, okay, relatively speaking, easier to do. Other companies that try to do it, they have to dig, dig trenches in silicon and put it deep in, which causes a lot of stress, uh, redu reduce the flexibility, flexibility of you know, bonding it and aligning it. So yes, I do believe what we have done is, uh, is uh, very differentiated. So gents, what is the, and Thomas, I'm not sure if this is, this is your purview here, you guys tell me, what's the market opportunity for this flip chip DML laser? Yeah, yeah, so um, we, I think I'm gonna let uh, Vivek take the full uh, scoping of the market in terms of size, but let me just give you a sense of where a DML laser is used. So um, a DML laser today, for example, the biggest market opportunity which we're going after is the 100 gig data center. Uh, but beyond the 100 gig, there's 200 gig. Uh, it is used in, uh, 5G networks, either as front hall or back hall. Um, DML lasers are also available in 10 gig form at higher temperatures, which are again used in 5G networks. And finally, um, they're also used in what are called long range communication networks or LR type networks, uh, which are beyond the data center. They connect data center to data center as opposed to within a data center. And those are also using uh, 25 gig DML. So I just want to give you a perspective that while our initial market entry and the market sizings and the revenue potentials that we've talked about are tied to this 100 gig application, which is um, you know obviously the one that we're going after with our joint venture partner, SAIC, the applications of both the laser and the technology can quickly proliferate to a much broader set of applications and um, you know, one of the products that we did tape out on as part of our multi-product vehicle is starting to look at that. It's going beyond this 100 gig and already starting to prefetch 200 gig LR4 and some other applications where the same laser, the same assembly process are used. So those are, that's the benefit of the platform. So I'm gonna let, it, let Tom and Vivek uh, work, take you through the sizing of the market in terms of the actual opportunity we're talking about. Yeah, I, I wanted to just jump in, George, and can, and maybe uh, amplify on something that we put in the press release. When we talked about the joint venture and what the joint venture was about, we were talking about the transceiver market for 100, 200, and 400 G uh, optical engines for for transceivers, and we put a, a revenue target on that joint venture of about 250 million in 2025. Uh, in the last press release, um, I said that we believe the opportunity in the same time period for just the 100G segment was about 100 million in the same time period. So there was some confusion about the difference between 250 and 100. 100 is only a part of the 250. The other, the other two speeds are 200 and 400 G, which particularly 400 G will, will start to really climb in the, in the out years. But 100 G is the biggest market uh, component today. And I also wanted to make the point that we're simply talking about transceivers or optical engines being sold by the joint venture. Um, and and that's the number that we have put on, you know, the revenue expected or the revenue target for the joint venture. That doesn't cover any of the other applications that the optical interposer can be utilized for. And that was even my question, is it relevant engines. to any markets other than transceivers? That's correct. Yeah. 
So just to size the market again, you know, maybe there's some repetition, but it's a mark today, just the 100G space is a $2.5 billion transceiver market opportunity. We play a big role, big portion, you know, a big, uh, more than 50% of it is in what we call the single mode using the DFP DMLs at 25G. And then in addition, 400G, 200G and 400G is rapidly increasing in the next, you know, horizon of three to five years. So we have a, you know, you can in, in 2025, if I was to pick a multi-billion dollar, you know, opportunity here, which we play a significant role in. Okay, that's saying, that's really saying something, Vivek, that's, that, that's great. Um, we kind of touched on this earlier, so I want to go back to it because I always like, I always like outside validation. So customer reaction has been, has been pretty positive. Uh, but they've known what you've been working on. Have since the release, have you guys heard from outside customer, you know, from the industry in general or or prospective customers about this achievement and their reaction? So uh, we we have uh, shared with customers. We are setting up meetings now to discuss further with them. But clearly, there has been a positive, you know, feedback from the customer base knowing that we have achieved something that will provide a much better cost structure to them, you know, in a market which is growing, but the prior prices are coming down. So they are struggling to maintain margins. So yes, to answer your question, George, yes. And uh, there is significant customer interest. We'll, uh, we'll have to go into details discussing with them, uh, you know, and uh, providing samples and getting and winning their business. What kind of cost savings are you are you delivering? So as we said, uh, just for 100G uh, CWDM, again, that's the lowest speed where the prices are the most suppressed, okay? So let me start with that. We, have de- we can deliver between 25 to 40% cost savings to our customers where they can either reduce their end uh, pricing and still make money or increase their margins, you know? So both situations, over time, the prices are reducing rapidly in this 100G. But then if you move to 200G CWDM4, uh, you know, the prices are slightly better. Our cost structure, the pro- what we provide as a cost is not too much higher. So again, there's a big opportunity there. And then there are other emerging uh, formats as Suresh mentioned in 5G networks, in, in front hall, mid hall, you know, where they're even instead of four CWDM4, you have CWDM6. So you have six of these lasers in different colors side by side. So our, the benefit we are providing really escalates at those points, you know. So when you have multiple lasers being flip chipped attached on the interposer, uh, we provide a much higher value. Oh, we may have lost Suresh's voice there, but we got, we got most of that. Uh, sorry, Vivek's voice there. Um, gents, um, the Chinese have a saying, and, and, and maybe I'll, I'll bring this to you, Suresh. The Chinese have a saying, be careful what you, what you wish for. Uh, do you have the resources, if, 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 uh, if you really achieve everything you want to achieve here, do you have the resources to handle the new customers, the onslaught of what potentially could come of this over time? Yeah, I believe, uh, you know, what we're doing is, um, look, I, I think, you know, um, in, in order to succeed, we, we, we don't want to overreach and overstretch. So we've been very articulate about our roadmap and, and we're sticking to that. We, we do think that that forms the good underpinning for our business plan. I think Vivek has presented this at the um, AGM in August and we're executing to that plan. So the plan basically allows us to systematically walk before you can run. Um, I think we, um, while, uh, as Vivek said, I mean, there's, the, the technology and the interposer has always had promise with customers. They, they look at what we're doing and saying, ah, these guys are, are working on a, a different, unique, differentiated, easy to understand approach, believe it or not, um, to, to you know, how uh, photonics devices are assembled and packaged. Uh, but the burden of proof has always been on us um, to demonstrate across a couple of different applications 
And we're slowly getting through these major system level burdens of proof. Well, for example, can you do a DML? Well, now we say we can. Could you do a CW laser with good coupling efficiency? I think a week ago we presented that we yeah. could do that. So we're slowly getting past these critical burden of proof requirements we had on us, not at the component level, we had done that a year ago, but now at an assembled system level, you know, there, there are these hurdles you gotta go through. And so these things that we're releasing now um, are, are significant advances to our capability because critical burdens of proof at a system level integration are now getting solved. And, and that allows us to get one product out. And then, like I said, we would proliferate beyond that. That's where also the JV comes in. Uh, and we will probably be sharing more information about that with our shareholders. We were started getting the management team of the JV put in place, hiring people into the JV. And you know the initial capital expenses that are needed to establish the fab and the lab are, are starting to be put in place. So it's not just Poet, we're getting now the, 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 the benefit of having this joint venture to come in and support, if you will, the, the building qualification and ramping and scaling of these solutions that Poet has been developing over this, uh, over this period of time. So I think we're being deliberate. We don't have infinite resources. We cannot pick up every shiny rock along the way, um, but we have a roadmap. And I think it's critical that we focus on executing to that roadmap, which we believe will result in success for us, the company, the shareholders, as well as potential investors. Yeah, ju I'm just, I, yeah. I'm go just ahead. add no, to go that ahead. is we have uh, built, brought in key experienced people to the team, okay, to to provide uh, expertise at of all different types levels that is needed to do, and we are also partnering rather than doing and making everything ourselves. We are partnering and strategically partnering. Suresh, I, I like by the way that you said that, and it's funny. I use that example of the shiny rock. You can't pick up every shiny rock; otherwise, you you'll drop them all. Uh, at the end, at the end of the day, right? And uh, I like that you're you have the sense to say we're not going to go try and grab everything. It's good to actually hear. Some shareholders might think you're not going after every opportunity, and you can't. The success actually comes from leaving some opportunities on the table and focusing on on the right ones. I'd be remiss if I didn't ask, guys, devil's advocate. Um, what's what's your Achilles heel? Uh, and not that mean not that that means it's fatal. Uh, but every company has an Achilles heel, something that keeps it up at night that it worries about, you know, everybody, I don't care if you're Coca-Cola, Google, or Agoracom or Poet Technologies, there's always uh, some sort of an Achilles heel out there. What would it be for you guys? Can, can I address, uh, Suresh, if, uh, okay. Please. So the way I see today, what, if, yeah, if, you know, you can refer to as the Achilles heel is that there is a certain process of winning business. We do need okay. to sample customers. Customers do need to design it in. And these are not commodities, right? Although there are certain standards, it still takes time and, and collaboration with customers to design in our products. It has to go through a qualification cycle. There are certain qualification times which are industry standard you have to meet. You know, You can't say there's no shortcut to it. And it's important for that. Sure. So I would say, at least from my point of view, we have overcome uh, most of the, if not all, and I will keep announcing and, and sharing with you and the investors as we, as we uh, make these achievements, okay, in our platform. But ultimately, you know, this time, we cannot shrink that time from the qualification and getting revenue and business. So I think... That is really what the, the situation today, yeah. Which probably explains why you guys are a pretty calm group at the end of the day. You realize there's a process here and that you've just got to go through. So you're not, you know, a lot of small caps sometimes will try and jump up and down and talk about all the shiny rocks in the catch, but I, I, like, I like that approach. So, so I, that, I, I think Vivek hit the nail on the head back at the AGM in August. He said, we're, we're getting to a point where, look, I think 
you know, having done the research, move development, and then go to products, and then, you know, um, the number of gotchas go away and schedules become a little bit more deterministic. Um, and I think that's the phase we're on. We, you know, there, there, there is a certain time period, unfortunately, to roll these things out. And, and if there was an Achilles heel, it's for Poet. I mean, we are fabulous today. And so we are dependent on a lot of partners working with us on lockstep. And, and some of those schedules and timelines you know, are, I mean, we wish they could have been faster, but they follow a certain lead time that is consistent with what the industry uses that we have to live with. So, so I think, uh, but, but, the, but the fact of the matter is that the number of, um, I guess, issues that we have to solve or, uh, or you know, I used to call it, um, that's whack-a-mole, um, you know, early in research, there are so many issues that you there are, you know, these molds keep coming up and you got to keep uh -huh. whacking them, right? Uh, the, and, and in software, they call it the bug rate, the, the, the rate at which you solve bugs. Um, I mean, that's, that piece is, is now to be, you know, is, is mostly done and we're down in this deterministic product development phase, which, um, which is invigorating for, for us. I mean, we're, we're seeing, you know, obviously the, the, um, the light, if you will, <laughs> at the end of the tunnel. Uh, coming out the other side of our of our interposers and, and usable light that can be used for product. Um, it's December twenty first um, as we're as we're recording this and talking about this. So the year is almost done. Uh, you've achieved a new fifty two week high today. So congratulations there. What's next for Poet? Uh, is the year pretty much done? Is there more that can happen in the year? But more importantly, what's next? Uh, for for the company on its on its on its roadmap. Well, the year is not done. Oh my God, no. Um, so we, okay. We've got work to do. Um, you know, look, I, I think uh, for for us, it's it's uh, it's it's a real focus on customer acquisition and product uh, product release. You know, I think that's that's what our focus is going to be for the next six months. I think we're we've got a. Um, you know, package of information now with a lot of these burdens of proof behind us that Vivek and team are taking to to the customers, both, you know, the ones that we've engaged in previously as well as new ones. Um, and so our focus over the next six months is unchanged from what it was back in June. I think the, you know, we, we, we were deliberate about our roadmap. We were deliberate about our communications. We felt that it was important to communicate um, with transparency, but but also the timing of the communications needs to be consistent with our degree of comfort. And uh, you know, we want to be credible uh, with the information we put out there. And so I think when you're seeing us now come out with with uh, a cadence of releases, um, it is there's an underpinning of real data um, that goes behind it. And that that we can stand on, and 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 uh, and we feel comfortable about that. So we're going to just keep down that path. I mean, nothing changes for us as a company just because um, we had a good day on the market. You know, we expect that as we execute, um, there are going to be many of these days. And I think, you know, I hope this becomes uh, a norm rather than an exception. Well, I can't think of a better way to end it off than that, Suresh. So I won't ask anything more, and I like I like what you said there. You'll be expecting more of these kind of days down down uh, in the future. But on this day, gentlemen, congratulations on your achievement on a, on a big industry first. That's the most important thing. You, you got to have a great business, otherwise you don't have anything. And congratulations today on hitting a new fifty two uh, week high, and as Suresh said, to many more to many more in the future. For those of you at home, you've been watching Poet Technologies or you've been listening by podcast on uh, Spotify, Apple, Google, all those devices that make uh, Poet uh, possible and uh, and keep them working harder and harder. I mean, just by what we're doing here, us Zooming, you guys listening on Spotify or watching uh, on YouTube is what makes Poet, such a great future for the such a great company for the future, and keep developing these products. But we know that you know it isn't the easiest technology in the world to understand. But 
take do yourself a favor watch the last this video and the last video we've done because the company's really gone out of its way to really explain in layman's terms what it's doing and to me it's incredibly exciting it's almost like sometimes i can't avoid uh thinking that when i'm watching netflix or do what i'm doing that uh, that poet's going to play a very important role in how fast all the things happen that are necessary for this to happen so thanks for joining us for all of you who don't see you before christmas and or the holidays wish you all a very merry christmas happy holidays and have yourself a great day make sure you tune in next time see you soon